Okay, so this is the 2019 2 to 7 2 Humanities, Social Studies, Geography, Paper 1 walkthrough. So this is for question 2. So for those of you who are attempting question 2 for GI, this is the walkthrough for your consideration. All right, so like question 1, it is a very similar kind of a first portion here for part A. Two stimulus, one table and a half field uh, graph. Okay, of sorts, right? So once again, it is uh, the Caribbean island of Antigua again. So what this other group of students are trying to investigate is whether changes in altitude affect rainfall. Okay, so what do they have? They have monthly rainfall data and it's taken from the island's meteorological service, which means this is actually secondary data, not primary data. Right, so when we're looking at this area here, what you have, you have uh, it tracked across together with your rainfall that is tracked across for this particular area of Antigua, right? So question 2a, once again, part 1 asks you to use the data in the table to fill up the bar graph. Now bear in mind, once again, you're looking at rainfall data, so it's bar graph, no spacing in, uh, spacing in between your bars. Uh, the other thing, just like I mentioned for question 1, uh, you ideally should use the same kind of shading that is provided by the uh, examiners in the insert or in this case in the given space here so you can see that it's actually fully colored out so they would require it would be more ideal if you could follow the same uh, legend for this portion here okay so keep this in mind this is important uh, there isn't a lot to do for this particular question it's really just a case of use a ruler measure and then shade out the four bars that are uh, based on the data that's given above so you just have to be very more careful and this two marks shouldn't be an issue for you at all. Secondly, what we're looking at is we're looking at using table two data to calculate the mean monthly rainfall for Antigua in 2019. So what this is actually, um, once again, not a difficult thing, right? So you have 12 months of uh, mean monthly rainfall uh, gathered in your table already. So you do need to take an average of the 12 months and you will come up with the data that's required the mean monthly rainfall. Okay, you will see that it's actually in the low 80s, low 80s, which is a very significant amount of rainfall actually. Right, so moving on. Part B deals with them collecting data for the month of September. They've decided to do primary data collection. So uh, insert the figure four in the insert shows the locations where they are using for investigation together with table three, which shows the data they have collected using a rain gauge. Now, uh, they want a hypothesis to investigate relationship between altitude and rainfall. Whether you want to talk about it being a positive or negative relationship, it's up to you. But um, either ways, these two are our key factors. You need to remember, you need to be able to pick out the two factors involved here are altitude and rainfall, and you need to have a relationship Okay, once again, it's no hard and fast rule that this has to be a positive or a negative relationship. It just needs to be a relationship that you can test with the data that you have already obtained from table three. Okay, suggest how far the information in table three and table four and figure four subject supports or rejects the hypothesis you have come up with. Right, um, whether it's a positive or negative one, this particular set of data is unique because this data actually has no relationship. Right, how are we going to ascertain that? Okay, you pick from you, you go through the data uh, in terms of elevation, right? From the smallest elevation to the highest elevation, and look at the changes that is corresponding in rainfall. So, if you look at the very the the lowest uh, elevated land, which is uh, Kate's Bay, okay, Kate's Bay, right? It is only three meters above elevation. Your rainfall is two hundred and seventeen mm. The next one, as you increase in elevation to thirteen meters right an increase of 10 meters right there's a slight increase in rainfall good so uh, it, it would if your hypothesis was increased will lead to increase right yeah good seems to be cor corroborate that but then we move to the next higher elevation point which is 37 37 right you look at it you are also still increasing so well done right so there's a general increased trend as we move further on to 42 is it increasing it is no longer increasing at 42, it has suffered a massive drop. And then as we move on to the next one, which is 59, it goes on to drop further. Okay, then you move to 151, you realize it jumps back up again. As you move to 172, it drops again. 
So you have a situation where you have three increase and three decreases, and this situation will mean that there is actually no tangible relationship that is found within this particular uh, set of data between altitude and rainfall. There is no discernible relationship. So bear in mind there are times where the data really doesn't show a discernible relationship at all. So when this happens, you have to be confident enough. Since the data, you look through the data again, you can see that there is really no discernible link between these two. We are going to be able to accept this and we will have to put it down as no clear link. Okay. So it is not always that it is a positive relationship or a negative relationship. There are always chances where you have no relationship. That is important. Please remember that. Put that down. That is a possibility. Okay. So in this case here, there's no clear relationship between these two. Next, as we look at the part C, right? Students review the accuracy of the data. So uh, how, how can they ensure that it is accurate? Please bear in mind once again, when we're dealing with accuracy, we are dealing with the idea of, uh, the idea of accuracy, which is measurement accuracy. We're not looking at the number of times, the number of sites that you are actually harnessing your data from. Accuracy has got to do with whether you're collecting accurate data, your instruments, your processes of collection, do you follow the correct steps, do you take the correct precautions for all these things? That is what we are looking for. So keep this in mind, your answer should revolve around this. You should not focus instead on things like doing um, insufficient rounds of data collection, insufficient look sorry, locations of data collection, this should be an uh, issue of instrument, process, and following all the necessary precautions to ensure that the data is accurate data. Okay, keep this in mind, this is important. Right, and so this is question two of 2272 2019 paper, right? Hopefully this has been helpful for you. Uh, moving on, we've been dealing with the rest of the questions.